Hi, and welcome to another episode of Steve's Film Vault. This is part two to the scene mode uh, of your camera. Remember, we talked about that. If you watched the previous episode, we covered full auto. We covered no flash. We also covered creative auto and portrait modes. We're going to continue on right now with landscape. These modes are set so you can quickly turn your camera to the right setting for the right occasion and have a lot of things be automatic for you so you don't have to worry so much about your various settings. There's a lot to override and that's always fun too. So you can become more creative as you learn what the different modes of overriding those automatic features are on your camera. Uh, as we mentioned in the previous episode, on the back of the camera you have a little button that has a cue on it and that allows you to make those changes that are within that particular mode. So let's go ahead and flip it to landscape. Now if you remember in portrait, portrait was always shallow depth of field because you're doing a portrait, you want the background blurry. As you might imagine, landscape, you don't want the background blurry. So what's happening is you're always going to get a long depth of field or a much larger depth of field in the landscape mode. So it looks like a couple of mountains. I went ahead and switched to that one. And as I hit the Q button, I have the exact same settings as I had in my portrait mode. In other words, I'm able to change the ambience of the image. I'm able to change the color balance color temperature setting, and I also have control over my drive modes. And in a landscape, you want to make sure that if you're using a zoom lens, that you have your zoom set to wide or more on the wide side, because landscape, you do want to get a broader image, pull it out to wide, it will give you a much better image as you shoot. The next mode that we have is called close-up mode. Now, unlike macro, which is a lens function, if you've heard of a macro lens or if you may have seen a macro lens a adapter you can put on your actual camera lens that will allow you to get literally within um, an inch or less to your, your subject to be able to get an amazing close-up, almost a microscope type of a shot. Close-up actually gives you a very close uh, range of focus and in the close-up mode, you want to shoot it with your lens uh, in full telephoto mode. Uh, it works best for that. So if I hold my fingers, if it just kind of flashes, I get to a point to where I now finally see uh, detail. And, and now I'm actually able to take the picture once uh, I get to the right distance. If I am too close, it will flash and not let me take the picture. So if you're wondering how come it's not letting me take the shot, it's because you're not far enough away. Back up a little bit more, zoom in, and eventually it will give you that nice, clear, crisp close-up shot. In the close-up mode, the Q settings is going to be the same as portrait and landscape. So you have the ambience, uh, the uh, color temperature, and the drive modes. So as you're shooting, that is what you're gonna be looking for. Okay, the next setting is the sport mode. This is actually going to continue to focus for you as long as you have your finger halfway down on the lens. It will continue to keep focusing. Uh, so if you have an, a subject that is moving toward you or away from you, it will constantly be trying to keep that focus as you're shooting whatever action shot you're shooting. Um, also remember as you're shooting in this sport mode and you have the zoom lens, you want to be set more to the telephoto uh, instead of the wide and that will also give you better control over that focus as well. The Q settings is going to be the same of what we had in the previous modes. In other words, we have control over ambience, control over color temperature, and control over the drive. A lot of times when I am shooting in this mode, I would probably have it in continuous mode on the drive mode, so it'll take quite a few in a row. And that's kind of the direction I want to go in as I'm shooting in sports mode, sometimes even in portrait mode. Uh, you kind of want that supermodel feel where it's just rattling off those shots one right after the other. 
Finally, we have our scene mode. There is a lot to scene mode. So we're gonna kind of break this down as if it's like three more modes that the camera has that they grouped under one mode as scene mode. So in scene mode, when I hit the Q, the upper left corner, um, I do have a number of options. So I go ahead and hit set. The first one I have is night portrait. Night portrait will basically illuminate the background. When you shoot night portrait, you wanna generally use a wide angle lens and you also wanna make sure you use a tripod. In fact, it actually says right here, the use of a tripod is recommended. Let me go back to Q again. The second mode is handheld night scene. Now this one is interesting because as you use the handheld night scene, it will take four consecutive shots. Those four consecutive shots is actually designed to help stabilize the image. It'll take the four shots, analyze them, and from that analysis, be able to merge them together to get one sharp image. The final version that you have is what's called HDR backlit control. This one is actually designed to cover high contrast type of images, whether you have a very strong backlight or you have high contrast within the picture itself. It's gonna take three exposures one that is gonna be stopped down, uh, a lower exposure than a normal exposure, and then a brighter exposure, and it will take the different areas and merge those together. So the areas that are normally bright will be toned down, the areas that are normally dark will be um, brought up, and the normal exposures will remain the same in that one shot. In both cases of the backlit control and handheld night shot, you are gonna wind up with one final image. You will not see the four or the three in the case of the backlit when you take those pictures. You'll only see the final outcome of that picture. Uh, on the T5i, those are basically the three modes that you have and your drive mode. On the T6i, however, um, we actually have more choices. We have the first one called a kids mode for capturing kids in motion. Basically what's happening here is that you are getting a warmer look that will give a very healthy look to the child's face. And it will also do what you did in sports mode where it will be able to allow you to stay focused on a child that is in motion. So that is the kids mode. You also have food uh, for culinary photography. Uh, this basically gives you an extra mode, if you know in the middle there, and once you choose that, you can come down and choose, do you want warmer tones or do you want cooler tones? So it will adjust your color temperature accordingly. Let's go back up to one more time. You also have candlelight. And once again, in the candlelight mode, you also have the ability to adjust the color tones either to a cooler or warmer look but either way, you are gonna have the opportunity to keep those nice, rich, golden tones when you are shooting someone under a candlelight situation. And then finally, you do have the night portrait, as in the T5i, also with the handheld night scene, as in the T5i, and also the HDR backlight control, which is the same as the T5i. You also have the drive modes in that situation as well. And if you notice, as we do go through those other modes, that each one has its own set of controls that you may have. So once again, with the kid mode, you do have the ability to change uh, your ambience. And you also have the option to change the color temperatures. And uh, as you check each one of these out, just kind of play around and see what options they give you in each case. So we've pretty much covered all of these options, so you should be able to, to understand what these mean now to be able to play with them. So that's both the T6i and the T5i. So that's basically it for this episode. At this point, we have covered all the different modes that the camera has to offer, so you'll be able to go out and experiment with these different modes, find out which ones work best for you. Uh, remember, take note, be mindful of the settings that the camera is making for you, and that can allow you to start using more of the manual modes as well to your advantage as you're shooting and make your own adjustments. Uh, we do have a lot more to come. We've only still just scratching the surface. 
So, uh, once again, if you like the episode, hit the like button. If you really like what you're seeing, please subscribe. And also, please leave me comments if there's anything you want to see me cover. Uh, that's basically it for me for this episode for Steve's Film Vault. Thanks for watching. <laughs>